Good day, fellow investors. In this video, we'll discuss why the market is up 30-40% over the last 12 months, why Buffett sold his Apple position, why the Bitcoin is up, how much it is up, why there will be no crash yet, and all that is explained thanks to the inelastic market hypothesis. Professors Gabaix and Cohen from Harvard and the University of Chicago have found that Every $1 invested increases the market value by $5. If you invest $1 in a stock purchase, the value of those stocks goes up from $4 to $10. 1 equals a 5x in value. And that explains what's going on with the current market. Remember, search it, Gabay Koyen in search of the origins of financial fluctuations, the inelastic market hypothesis, you have it for free online. For those who don't know me, my name is Sven Karlin. We are approaching a quarter of a million subscribers for this value investment channel on YouTube. Thanks for your support. And I used to be a finance and accounting professor. So I hope I can explain well what's going on from a risk and reward perspective. That's why you are here. And let's immediately start by discussing price discovery and that then explains what's going on. When you look at stock prices, usually the idea was that we have the treasury yield and on top of the treasury yield you give a 2% premium for stocks because stocks were considered riskier. And that is exactly what was the case in history. 5% on bonds plus 2% for the premium and the return on stocks was 7% on average from that valuation perspective, 7% plus 2% growth. That's the 10% yield that you get from investing in the stock market. What's the difference now? Now the yield is not 7%. The prices are high because of the distortion thanks to inflows the market inelastic hypothesis and the price is much higher and the earnings yield is half of what it was historically. But the price is explained by high inflows in an inelastic market and from Bloomberg we see how this year traders, investors plowed 913 billion into US ETFs. This is just US ETFs, add the pension funds, add everything else. And then you understand why. First, no ETF lost money almost this year. The last 12 months, most US low cost funds have positive returns. And that is because of the huge inflows. And those huge inflows increase the market valuation, you cannot fight it. 32% up for the S&P 500. Some stocks did even better. Nvidia exploded as many chase a limited amount of stocks. And the problem with these stocks is that you are not going to sell a stock that goes up. Thus, the supply of those stocks is low. The demand is high. What happens to the price? It just goes up as shown here. Consequently, also the perfect example of supply and demand price forming is Bitcoin. There is just supply and demand here that forms the price and therefore we have, what is this, more than a double in the last 12 months. And perhaps this comment from Spura explains things perfectly. And nobody cares if equity yield is 3% or bonds at 5.5% as long as the price goes up 15% or more per year. That replaces a yield for a lot of people. Great comment. The key of the comment here is as long as prices go up 10 to 15% per year. As long as that happens, inflows will keep on flowing and prices will go up. And nobody cares that the current dividend yield is just 1.21% compared to the historical 4%. The last time something like that happened was in Japan. Nobody cared about prices. People were paying whatever, thinking that stocks can only go up. Rude awakening came was down 80% or something. And now the Bank of Japan 
is buying everything to put it back where it was 35 years ago. Nevertheless, the market inelastic hypothesis also explains why Buffett sold. If you look at Warren Buffett, his position, he started selling already end of 2023 and he continued selling here his position. And I would argue that he might be out of it by the end of this year. We'll see when he reports the next 13F. And Warren Buffett sold because he thinks the market is too expensive. He doesn't like Apple's buybacks at this price, especially as everybody is pushing the price higher, including Apple. If Apple spent 500 billion on buybacks over the last few years, multiplied by five, that's 2.5 trillion in market capitalization. That's how it works. But a joke on Wall Street goes that people think over, oh, I will sell whenever there is trouble, I immediately sell, lock in my gains and I'm rich. That's why Warren Buffett sold. You call your broker, Buffett has a trader, and he says, sell everything, sell Apple. A minute of silence, and then the trader says, to whom? So Warren Buffett sold his stocks to avoid a to whom answer, because when all of this reverts, there is nobody to sell to. And that has happened already a few times in the last two decades, so 50% down, 50% down, 34% down in a month. Then we had here a small bear market, but then we are now again up. Nevertheless, I have found this. This is the Dow index adjusted for inflation. And the last time the market did something like this, like it did over the last 15 years, it was in the 1920s, the roaring 20s. And I have plotted this, the 1920s, compared to the last 15 years. And if you were try to play a little bit with transparency, here you have the 1920s and here you have the last 15 years. Better than that, I don't know how one can describe it. And this leads to the next question, will all of this crash? And I have created a small diagram to explain that at some point in time, yes, this might crash, but not yet likely. And it will crash when the flows revert, but there is a huge incentive that these flows never revert. As Pura here said, nobody cares about the price anymore. Everyone just cares about stocks going up. However, the Bitcoin again is a perfect example of what happens when these flows revert. So when that reverts, you can see 70% down in a little bit more than half a year. That is the risk. Also here, huge crashes. When the flows reverts, this happens. Same for the stock market. As long as the price goes up 15% per year, we have nothing to worry. But if it doesn't go 15% per year up anymore, then we have a big issue ahead. However, there is something that might save people at least for a while, and that is that the stock market is too big to crash. Because if I look at the consumer balance sheet, so the asset side of the consumer, 120 trillion in assets is in financial assets, pension funds and deposits. If this crashes, let's say it just goes 50% down, then the consumer loses almost half of his wealth. Wealth is connected with something that is the key component of economic growth and economy, and that is consumption. If you feel rich, you will likely spend more. And that's exactly what's going on. If we look the average personal saving rate in the past where people were poorer was much higher. Now people consider saving as something not to think about. So the saving rate is, what's this? Three, four percent in the normality. So the governments cannot allow for this to crash because it would have a terrible impact on consumption on everything. Plus, the government needs to print money, the government needs to keep interest rates lower. Low interest rates lead to inflation in asset prices. Therefore, the stock market is too big to fail and the Fed 
will save you no matter what. They cannot allow this to revert at this point in time. And therefore, they are already saying how this is just temporary, we will lower rates and keep them low. The next shock, the next recession, what will the Fed do? They are already money printing junkies, so they will just print, print, print to get us out of any kind of crashes, issues, economic downturns, or pain at all. And they will push this till the end. And at the end is when this all changes. And the day this all changes is when you stop going to work the next day for the same money. When you say, wait, you're just printing money, you're just keeping artificial interest rates low, that money is worthless. At some point in time, you will say, I'm not going to work for the same money tomorrow because it's worthless. At that time, and only then, the part is over. But you have to say that. Because the Fed has increased its balance sheet 10x. If your salary is not a 10x, you have lost value in time. That is the reality, and unfortunately, they will keep pushing it, they will keep printing it, they will keep interest rates lower until it's over. And I have seen this in the past, I have lived through such an environment. I was a billionaire when I was seven years old, and this is what simply happens. Debts get too high, governments just print money, and I was, as I said, a billionaire when I was seven. Too much debt, at some point people lose confidence in the currency, and then it's over. For now, it works with the dollar, it works with the euro, but when that happens, and I hope it doesn't happen for as long as, I don't know, we are alive, but that is the key risk. And therefore, I know that we are in the greatest financial bubble in history, but I have no idea about the timing of it. I guess we will wait and see. And the problem is that when you look at the key drivers of the current financial environment, 71 years old, 70 years old, Ben Bernanke is not that old, but he retired, got a Nobel Prize, writes articles and books, and they simply don't care what will the consequence be of this situation, because by the time the consequence be there, they will be A, getting Nobel Prizes, be retired or let's face the fact that so nobody cares but don't argue with the fed the fed is just doing what you want them to do and that's to serve you the people and as long as the price goes up 15 percent per year everybody is happy and that is what the people want and the fed is playing that game so i don't think we'll see a crash maybe it will be tomorrow maybe it will be in 10 years I don't know. I know that we are sitting on a barrel of dynamite, but we value investors. Buffett went to treasuries, protection, safety. We value investors have to look for value investments, and we look for value investments wherever that market inelastic hypothesis reverts, because one dollar out of the market lowers the value, the market value by five dollars if not more, in a shorter period of time. Therefore, that is where we look for opportunities. And thankfully, the market is irrational, exuberant on one side, panicking on the other side, and that is where we search for value. For more value, subscribe, check my research platform. That's a value investment, no risk. Check it out, 21-day money-back guarantee.